Amen. Christos Haryavi Merevots. Christ is risen from the dead. Says Yemez Medzavedis to you and to us. Great news. What a joyful celebration we are here to celebrate this evening. We're primarily gathered, of course, to celebrate the fact that Christ has indeed conquered death by his death. However, in addition, this year in particular, we have also gathered for something quite unique for our parish, which is the baptism of one of our catechumens, Kyle Hall. And this is a tradition that goes back all the way at least as early as the fourth century. We have records of this happening where all of those who were gathering and throughout the year with teachers of the day in order to study their faith would be baptized during this very badarak, during this very vigil, just as we have just experienced. And so what a wonderful privilege that we, of course, got to experience a special day with Kyle, but also to connect with an ancient tradition of the past. However, it might seem strange to us that these two occasions are linked. Aren't the Easter services long enough? Why do we need to add a baptism on top of it? In a more serious way, right? What is the connection between Christ's resurrection and the baptism of those faithful who had been studying as catechumens. What in the world does this initiation into the church have to do with Christ's defeat of death? I think the first piece that we need to clarify before delving deeper into the meaning of the connection between these practices is the fact that baptism is so much more than we often think it to be. Baptism is much more than simply being inducted into some sort of a social club or becoming a member of a country club. That's not what we've gathered to do today. And the way that we learn a little bit more about what baptism truly is, as Orthodox Christians, is we can look at our tradition to see what the tradition itself says about what we have just done. And so, the prayers of the service itself and the images that we see give us many different ways of understanding what baptism is. We're shown very clearly it is not simply a mere rite of passage. One of the images that we are given actually ties directly to the Feast of the Resurrection that we are gathered this evening to celebrate. And this image comes from one of our readings from St. Paul's letter to the Romans where he says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. St. Paul makes the bold statement that through the ritual of baptism, through the Holy Church, through this institution of which we are all a part. Somehow the body of Christ prayerfully joining together in order to immerse a catechumen or a child into the water, the baptism, that somehow through this process, the resurrection from the dead demonstrated through Christ, which we are here to celebrate today, is somehow imparted to the newly baptized. That Christ's resurrection from the dead has today been shared with and participated in by Kyle Paul, but also by each and every one of us who have been baptized into Christ's death and have been raised to newness of life in Him. The baptismal ceremony itself witnesses to this reality by the ritual act through which baptism is conferred. What do we do? How do we enact this ceremony? We take an individual 
and we plunge them into a body of water. Or if they're a little bit too large for the font that we have, like was the case today, we put some water over their head. But we do so in a particular way, right? We immerse them three times, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And in the same way that we immerse the one to be baptized three times, we are remembering the image that Jesus Christ was plunged into his tomb for three days before rising from the dead. What a beautiful image. What a beautiful way for us to understand what baptism truly is. Our participation in the resurrected life of Jesus Christ through dying and rising with him. But as beautiful as this powerful image might be, and the reality that it conveys truly is, the question becomes, what difference does it make to our lives? Does it actually affect our lives in the ways that we live? Yes, we have been raised up into Christ's resurrected life. What a wonderful and beautiful thing. What a nice thought. And still, we live in the midst of a very, very broken world. We live in a world where death, not life, are ever-present everywhere that we look. We live in a world that's filled with genocidal dictators, with corrupt systems of power, with disease and suffering that seem to be constantly bombarding us. We live in a world filled with broken people who seem to make it their sole mission in life to tear each other down to the point of no return. The world around us is overflowing with hatred and malice and evil of every conceivable sort all of which are echoing an even deeper reality, the reality of the sting of death, which awaits each of us. So this might make us think, might lead us to the conclusion that the resurrected life that we have been born into, supposedly through the baptismal font, if it's true, it maybe is meaningless. We still suffer. We still feel pain. We still are in the midst of the brokenness of this world. So what good does this baptismal font have in our lives? And yet, I think that that's exactly the point. Yes, the world around me seems to be constantly preaching a different gospel than the gospel of the risen Lord. A gospel of decay and destruction. Do I want to let that gospel lead my life? Or would I rather have the gospel of the risen Lord be that by which I make my decisions? By which I make my decisions? By which I orient all that I do? The very fact that the world is falling apart around us makes the gospel all the more essential and critical for our lives. The good news that our Lord showed us through his defeat of death on this very day that we are celebrating, this death that was inflicted upon him by the same broken world that we each experience, this reality revealed to us on that very first Easter, the very hope by which we can per persevere through all of the trials and the tribulations that this world could ever throw our way. Until Christ's glorious second coming, the world does still remain broken. Of course, on some level, we can and we should try to improve the world however we can, to bring God's love into it wherever we can. And yet, we know that the world will continue to try to tear us down every step of the way. But our role as Christians is not to save the world. That already happened. That was Christ's job. Our role is simply to keep the light of his gospel aflame within our souls in the midst of the stormy conditions that surround us. Our baptismal ceremony reflects this distinction beautifully in its second sacramental act, which is called chrismation. 
What we do in the midst of the chrismation ceremony is that we anoint nine parts of the body with holy mural and with the sacred chrism. We cover the body of that one being baptized from head to toe with this most sacred oil, which points us to the reality of the Holy Spirit, which has come upon him. We call these anointings gnunk, or seals. In the very same way that we might seal a jar that has food in it in order to keep the outside air from entering in. So too, though the Christian may be bombarded by evil and sin and cynicism and disease and anxiety and loneliness and oppression, that though we may be struck day by day by the reality of death in our lives and in our world, yet Though that reality exists on the outside, we are sealed by the grace of the Holy Spirit that the death of this outside world might not enter in, that it might stay out, and that we, just like the jar, may remain insulated from it and preserve that living hope of the resurrection in the midst of our hearts and of our souls. Brothers and sisters, today we gather not only to celebrate Christ's resurrection from the dead, but also our very own resurrections given to us through Christ on this day through our baptisms. This Easter celebration gives us the opportunity to call to mind and to reinflame within our hearts what we received on the day of our baptisms. That no matter what the world throws at us, if we remain connected to our Lord and remain in the faith of the good news of his resurrection, that indeed his resurrection will vanquish all that this deadly world around us can throw at us. May Christ's resurrection live within each one of us and draw us to join the heavenly host in offering constant praise and glory to our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Ai jumia mi shevavidyanus habidenis. Amen.